Bitcoin accumulation continues for the bulovs of the world. And in today's video, we're going over some very, very high term time frame charts as to what to expect for this next short term within this next five to day spread. And uh, and then also for the monthly as well, if Bitcoin bull is going to continue to, well, take the ball and run as uh, as there does seem to be some verifiable evidence of actually a major low in progress right here for the long term. But before we get to that, I want to once again let you know that you can still get 20% off of any one of the products or services in our Teachable store, which there is a link to in the description below with the code MIDSUMMER100. That's MIDSUMMER in all capitals. And then 100, you can even get one month for free of the Crown Qual Automation Service. I actually put out a video on this yesterday. And yes, you can use this tool, or it's the same tool that allows you to automate your strategy back testing. You can obviously set up whatever strategy templates that you want or use the ones that we provide as well. And you can even, you can even, and automate your trade execution as well. And again, we're offering this promo, which we don't know if we'll do um, for much longer uh, or, or, or actually ever again, um, just to see you know what the response is. But I truly believe that anyone who actually tries this tool um, is gonna have a very difficult time going back to manually doing things, um, especially if you're more systematically minded. So that promo or all these promos are available for you for a little bit less than 24 hours from now, and then they're gone, maybe for forever, who knows? Anyways, back into the actual analysis of the day, accumulation distribution indicator right here. This is the one that we'd like to check in on um, at the first of every month. And two major things have happened or are happening as we speak. One of them is that June has been confirmed as continuing with that upward slope. In July, the new month has opened up with a continuation of that upward slope. Again, the reason why that is significant is because all of the trend shifts, all of the trend reversals in Bitcoin's history on the macro scale have been marked off by the accumulation distribution indicator on the monthly getting a downward slope in the extreme green zone here. And right now we don't have that just yet. So this past month of price action is to be considered as reaccumulation still. You can also see that Bitcoin maintains above that red moving average, the five exponential moving average, which you know we've kind of had as like a general guideline as as long as Bitcoin's above, generally bullish. If Bitcoin starts to close below, okay, generally bearish. Um, but for right now, we have over the last couple months here, a couple of weeks to the downside below. That's fine. That's completely okay. Just don't want to see any closures below that. And now that moving average moves up to 61,750. So theoretically, assuming that this that this continues, we look at any sort of you know price action moves back down around that region or even just a little bit below that region, but not below last month's low as likely a good, um, you know, a good uh, per perhaps long term um, entry point. Of course, that's going to you know hinge upon Bitcoin's ability to continue to close above this moving average. But there's a very obvious way of kind of managing um, that sort of a uh, that that sort of a look. But going back into it here, I want to now go into a, a little bit of a deeper um, explanation of this indicator. So what I'm going to do is I'm put, as I'm going to throw on my drawing tools right here, and I want to talk about the positioning of this indicator as it is right now. You can see that I've marked it off with these with this green horizontal bar, and then marked off the last few times that we've seen this area hit on this indicator and what Bitcoin price. Actually was doing correlating to these vertical bars here and you can see that during these times these were the major bars the major months where bitcoin was actually not just retesting for all-time highs but can but essentially completing a major breakout from that test of prior all-time highs on a closing basis. Um, the only time where this was not necessarily true was in 2012. You can see that there was certainly a consolidation around this region. This was certainly a long-term opportunity, no doubt about that. Um, but going onwards and forwards from there, it's about the same area, you know, in Bitcoin cycle here. It's around that sort of break, that that sort of consolidation right below the prior all-time high before the big bad breakout. So what would this suggest? It would suggest that if we are going to see, you know, the bull laws continue to do what they want to do, we'd actually really be expecting Bitcoin to um, to potentially threaten a breakout this month, probably August, honestly. Um, I don't know if I necessarily see it this month, but then again, I don't need to see it. It just needs to happen <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, but uh, but again, you know, this would be the positioning that you'd expect it to come from. Very, very important right there. So as long as this curvature remains, again, upward sloped, I'm going to continue to generally be bullish on this market. And again, as long as Bitcoin is above that red moving average, the five exponential, just as a general rule, as long as Bitcoin's closing above it, can can wick below, that's fine. Generally going to be bullish as well. And that has been a pretty, um, you know, pretty 
pretty uh, foolproof, idiot-proof way of doing things long-term here. Again, if you are a more long-term investor, I mean, that is one of the big things I'd, be, I'd really be uh, referencing here. So yes, we've got that. We've got that. I'm just referencing my notes really quickly here. One moment while I bring up the rest of my notes because they weren't properly set up. There we go. And the next thing I want to get into is actually right here is on the monthly stochastic momentum. So we did identify that it did cross. We got our first cross to the downside in April and has been you know continuing uh, throughout June. And and will continue actually in July as well. But there's a couple things to be aware of right here. The crosses one to the downside in the critical zone are not like super concerning. We've seen this many times before, right? That first cross to the downside kind of happens, um, you know, about six months ish to a year before the actual top getting put in. So for example, we have one right here. Oh, I already have it in. Yeah. Uh, these red vertical bars here correlate to that area in Bitcoin's history. You can see that these were actually, um, you know, big breakout, you know, momentous breakout regions, which which is what you do expect in your critical zone. That's just extreme momentum there. It's not really until it comes back down below it where it's like actually quite concerning uh, for the long term. Um, but as of right now, you know, it's got that first cross to the downside. What we would expect Ju July, maybe August. I do think it's probably gonna be more more like August. Is that we'd expect it actually uh, bounce around the critical zone off this moving average and continue on to the upside. If in the case that we do see it cross again to the upside at the end of this month, you need to see price action close above 68,600. That would be the reverse formula for this one as of right now. So uh, keep that number in the back of your mind because it's going to pop up a little bit later. But basically, if Bitcoin is like super fucking bullish, what you'd be expecting here is Bitcoin throughout July to to pop back up above 68.6 basically and, and close the month out above there or, or, or somewhere around there. Um, that would be a really, 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 really good, uh, uh, what's called a signal that Bitcoin is going to continue like now rather than when I think is more likely at the end of summer, um, probably more so in August if things are going to continue here. But, you know, Bitcoin Bula is doing what they need to do um, before the monthly closure. So that does deserve some recognition here. Uh, moving on from there, I did want to get into something that's maybe a little bit more uh, in the middle. It is the, the monthly HPDR bounds. Now you can see that up until now, up uh, up until now, since the beginning of of the year, Bitcoin has been essentially above the median band on this, the one that my cursor is currently on right now, and has been using it as a as a bit of a basing point for this current consolidation. What would be very, very damning to me is if we saw the monthly close below that median, which right now is where? Well, if you listen to the last chart right here, it's the same pivot. It's 68,600 or so, or somewhere around there. So, you know, generally throughout Bitcoin's history, whenever we've seen Bitcoin above the median on the monthly, you know, these have been kind of like the like the really exciting portions of your bull markets, basically. Um, I'll, I'll highlight this last time over here. It was this area right here where it reclaimed and then boom new highs and that was basically from november of 2020 all the way to the highs of april of 2021 so it's not that long in terms of timing that we saw it above there but you know that was your tremendous move that that was like your exciting time when everyone's like going crazy about crypto and shit like that um kind of the same thing over here as well in the 2017 run, you can see that this one first started in April 2017, found its highs in December of 2017. Again, you know, doesn't last that long, but this was the really, really fun part uh, part that I think a lot of people kind of join in on crypto and so on and so forth in, um, in prior cycles, although maybe not as useful here because the HPDR bands just, they need more data to really um, uh, accumulate like like reasonable ranges but in this current case you know bitcoin is technically opening below it um so it would suggest that if we are going to see you know if, if bitcoin is bullish we'd really be expecting it to to pop back up test the median probably reclaim the median by the end of this month which again is you know mid to upper sixty eight thousand dollar territory so um it's kind of like a it's i i still think actually i do still think that if you are bullish on bitcoin you're kind of looking for it to continue from here. You really wouldn't be expecting like a big bad leg down. But to add on to the Saturday video that I did, the Saturday video, I explored what I believe the worst case scenario would be in the short term. A lot of people are like, maybe not a lot of people, but a couple of very loud commenters did not like that video. They're like, what? You're changing your opinion. It's like, no, I'm exploring an idea here. Like, what if? What if you're wrong? Because you know what? Over a long enough period of time, I'm going to be fucking wrong. Obviously, we all are. It's just the it's just the nature of things. But so it's it's like, what you shouldn't even consider this, man. People are gonna get bearish. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> People are crazy, man. Um, but 
I do think it's super interesting here to see that the bottom end of the 382 level here, the 32 range, is around that, you know, that bearish target that we were speaking about in Saturday's video as like a worst case scenario. It's in the, you know, 46, 47,000 dollars range. Um, so if we do see Bitcoin close below the median this at the end of this month, we do have to consider, you know, the possibilities of, of uh, you know, of a move like that coming down into the, you know, mid upper 40s as not just a uh, possibility, but a, a, a higher probability move now. Um, but until that happens, you know, in, in, until we get that still personally, I have to be angled towards the upside. I'm just, you know, I don't call a reversal before I see a reversal and I, we haven't seen it just yet. Um, in fact, with the advent of this last week of price action, there's a pretty easy way. I shouldn't say necessarily easy, but a pretty obvious way to kind of judge whether, you know, this is going to fail or not <laughs> below last week's low. You got some big problems below 60,000 bucks. Probably even, you know, you got some problems, especially on a higher term time from closure, like no less than a daily. Uh, but for right here, you know, what I'll kind of leave you with is the five day time frame. This, this is another just kind of like idiot proof chart. Not that not to, not to say like anyone who's watching this is an idiot. It's just, you know, it's just very simplistic analysis that in my in my opinion, when I say something like that, it's like it's like the Pareto principle. It's like 80, the, the 80, 20 rule. You know, if, if you just follow this, you're going to get it right. 80 percent of the time, you're going to be wrong. 20 percent of the time. Look. Whenever Bitcoin's above the five exponential on the five day time frame, it's trending to the upside. You might as well just stay long if you're a more long term investor. When Bitcoin's below it, be defensive. As of right now, with Bitcoin's last move to the upside, it is tested exactly to the five exponential. So what we expect to see is that Bitcoin starts to close above that region. If Bitcoin is going to really try an assault higher um, later this month, you know, maybe towards 66 or 68, uh, that that five exponential is officially at 63,650. So we'll watch that one, you know, as we get the new five day um, uh, opens and whatnot. We'll get another one in a couple days here. But uh, but basically, <clears throat> You know, we it, it, it's gotten the high of this bounce thus far, and uh, and more importantly, it's you know, Bitcoin's playing out that bounce that we spoke about last week. That even if you're super bear, like even if you're the biggest bear here, you know, you kind of have to be looking for a bounce off of this fifty-eight thousand dollars region, which is what we're getting right now. Um, if I throw in my drawing tools here, we can see that. Let me actually do a bearish retracement here because I do think it's more um, relevant for right now. But just one moment, boom and boom, <clears throat> we can see that Bitcoin did indeed hit the 382 level. So that was extremely high probability for this bounce. Doesn't necessarily have to continue exactly here from today, but you know it can pull back a little bit, maybe fill the gap on CME, something like this. But um, you know the next areas of interest to the upside are going to be around 65, basically, and then you got 66 and a half. Um, these are the these are kind of the major areas in my opinion. You know, if you are going to see a bull trap, probably comes from a rejection on a lower high right here. If that's going to happen, and then you'd expect the month to kind of close back down closer to sixty thousand bucks. So that's going to be the big thing to be mindful of um, throughout this month. But for right now, you know, you have to give the or you don't have to do anything. But I'd certainly give the bull laws a chance here. You know, they still got trend. They still got all of the higher term time frame um, signatures as of right now. And it's really just a question of how high does this bounce get that we're that we're currently seeing underway at like the very beginning of this new month of July. So keep your eyes on those regions. Again, if you're super bearish, I do think that this one will ultimately trade higher. Just uh, you'd be looking for a lower high, like a big rejection in this region here. Um, you know, probably in like a week or two, something like that, maybe. Anyways, yes, probably a good place for me to be leaving off again last day or a little bit less than a day left to claim any one of the discounts on a, on the services here with the code midsummer 100 and uh, the crown call automation for one month for free all right sweet that's going to do it for today as always I want to wish you the best best take care much love and see you hopefully next time